Finally, it's possible to create a quadrant chart in Power BI that does not just show the lines that create the quadrants, but has different colors for each quadrant. And this is all possible in the latest Power BI release. It's super easy to set up. It's dynamic and all native. Now, let me show you step by step how to set up this chart. Each quadrant chart starts with a normal scatter plot where you map different items on the basis of two metrics. So in this example over here, we have different vendors, which I scored on the basis of market foresight, which is on the x-axis, and operational excellence, which we have on the y-axis. Now, to make this chart easier to read, we can create quadrants and basically categorize our vendors into four different groups. Those in the top right corner could be our top leaders, and those in the bottom left corner could be those that are lagging behind. And then we have, let's say, the visionaries and the challengers, right? So just like the Gardner matrix. Now let's get started by creating the different quadrants, and we are going to use reference lines, probably a trick that you already know, but with a twist. All right, now I'm going to select that chart, then we go to formatting options, and then here we find reference line. Now let's add the first one, and I want this to be an x-axis constant line, all right? And then I want to place a more or less in the middle. We have scores from uh, 0 to 10 or 1 to 10. So therefore, I'm going to put this one to 5, so that's in the middle. And then I'm going to make the line disappear. So over here, the width, I'm going to put to 0. But there's a new feature. If we go a bit further down, there we can shade the area. Now, let me open up these options. And you see, we have that area that's to the left of that line in a different color. Now, here we can change the position to either before or after. All right. Now, I want it to be before. And here I'm going to choose a different color, for example, gray. OK. Now, I'm going to repeat this one more time. But now, I'm going to shade that area that's to the right of it. So I have to create another line. So add another one. This is going to be an x axis constant line as well. Then over here, we can also add a shaded area. But this time, we're going to put it to the right. Now, before I'm going to do that, also make sure that this one is set to 5. OK. Now it's overlapping. But I'm going to switch the position. So after. All right. Now, the line itself, also here, I don't want to show. So I'm going to put the width to zero. Of course, you can play around with the colors, right? So over here, I want to have yellow. So let me choose a yellow color. Perfect. All right. Now, these are not quadrants just yet. For that, well, we need another line, but then the other way around, a horizontal one. So let's add another line. And this time, we are not going to go for x-axis constant line, but a y-axis constant line. And I also want this one to be in the middle. So five. And we do the same trick. We make it disappear. So we set the width to zero, and then we can make use of the shading. So let's turn it on. And here, now already, you see, we have four quadrants. All right, nice. However, I want this to be on top, right? So I'm going to change the position to after. All right. And you see, if I now start to play around with the transparency, we get, well, different colors. All right. So you see, I chose blue and yellow on purpose, because if you mix the two, what do we have? We get green in the top right corner. All right. So you have to choose your colors in a smart way. And of course, if you think oh, these colors are a little bit too present, I don't see the dots anymore. Well, then just make it a little bit lighter, right? So we can increase transparency. For example, here I set this one to 75. And also here, this one, let's also drag it up to 75. OK, and then over here, that first one, let's also increase the transparency. And now you see the dots are more visible and we can play around with the markers themselves as well, of course. Now, here I want to have the type circle. That's fine. Here we can set the size and here the color, right? So if you want them to be more present, just decrease the transparency. All right, there you go. And then here on the border, I could go for a little bit thicker border, just like this. OK, perfect. Nice. All right. Now, we are basically having a quadrant chart already. But what I said at the beginning, I want these quadrants to be dynamic. Well, for that, we can make use of parameters, right? So over here, if we go to modeling, new parameter, we can go for numeric range parameter, which in this case goes from 1 to 10. That's the range of the scores. Then here we can have a parameter for the market foresight. I'm just going to call this one parameter x. All right, default, let's set it to 5. Add a slicer to the page, that's fine. And then we repeat it one more time for the y axis as well. 
So numeric range parameter, 1 to 10. And over here, we go for the same settings. The only thing that I'm going to change is the name parameter Y. Okay, so we have two slices. One is going to go here on the left, the other one here at the bottom. You could also put them there in the title section, but I want them here. All right, and I don't want the sliders. I want them to be smaller. I don't need the headers. That's fine. All right, then we can make them much, much smaller. So over here, the height, let's go for 50. And then for the width, let's see if 50 also works. Not that's too much. Let's go for 70. And then here in the properties, advanced options, responsiveness, I just turn off. Oh yeah, there they are. But still, they need to be a little bit bigger. Yeah, there you go. All right, so now that I have that, I can fill in, for example, a four here and a six there. Perfect, I'm going to slide them a little bit more to the right, right next to the title. And maybe to make them stand out, let's apply a little bit of shadow to them. Okay, and make that shadow, of course, a little bit lighter. Okay, nice. So now that I have this, I want them to be linked to, well, the quadrants. So I have to go back and then go here to the reference lines. Then select over here the lines. Now, there you see we hard-coded the five, but we can make this dynamic by clicking here on FX. And then here we can choose from all of our data the X and Y position. So there you go. And then we have to do that, of course, one more time. So over here, this one is also going to be X. So here, parameter X. And then also for the Y, there we also need to dynamically link it. So let's go now to parameter Y. Perfect. Okay. Now it's already linked. So you see, over here we can play around with the cutoff point. Perfect. Now, in this case, probably makes sense to have as a starting point 5.5. Five. All right, now what is still missing? We are missing the names of each quadrant. So let's put those in as well. Let me go to the formatting options and then again to the reference lines. And here you see we have the option to add labels, right? So if we take X axis constant line one, add the label, then oh, boop, there you go, we have a label. Now, probably not the label that you're hoping for, but we have some options. So here we can say, for example, that we want to show the name, ah, the name that we give it. Now let's call this one Challengers. Let's base it on the Gardener's uh, matrix. Okay, so I'm going to click on Edit. And then over here, I call this one Challengers. And let's change the color to dark gray. All right, that's one. And then we can do the same thing for the other one there. Now let's select it. Then add a data label. Nothing pops up, but that's because it's overlapping. So therefore, put it to the right. And then over here, we can say that we also want to have the name. Perfect. And we want to have a different color instead of blue, gray. And also here, click on Edit. And then we have, let's double check, the leaders. So let's click on Edit and type in leaders. Now that's nice, but I feel we need a little bit more space. So over here, I would like to add a little bit of space right after it. But you see, it doesn't work if I add just normal spaces. So you have to go to a website like emptycharacter.com. And then here you can just copy an empty character that's, that doesn't get deleted, and then click here on Edit. And then instead of normal spaces, you put in maybe three of these empty characters, and you can do the same thing for leaders. And then here we have to do it, of course, if we're on it. Okay, and that creates a little bit of extra space. And this still works also when we change the cutoff point, right? You see, it nicely moves with that reference line. Perfect. Now, what about the squadrons that we have there at the bottom? Now, of course, we also want to put in a descriptive name, but we don't have any reference line where we can show the label for. So what can we do? Well, we just create dummy lines, right? So if I add two more, uh, so over here, this is the first one, also going to be an X axis constant line, there you go. And then another one, right? So this is going to be also an X axis constant line, number two, and then these two, well, there we don't want to show the line, right? So 100% transparency or uh, put the width to zero. And for this one, the same thing. But then we also have to make sure that they show up in the right position. So just like the before, huh? so we have to click on FX and choose here the parameter X value. All right, and for the second one, again, the same thing. All right, so now that we have that, we select one of our lines and we want to show the data label. Now, nothing shows, but that has to do with the positioning. So this one, I want to show here at the bottom, you see, on the left-hand side, and we want to have as a style the name. Okay, and then we select the other one, and we do the same thing. So we show the label, 
this time on the right hand side, also under, and then here we want to have also the name. Okay, and now we have all of them, but we still have to rename the first one. So let's click on Edit and type in niche players. And then for the other one, there we have the visionaries. Perfect. And of course, also at the same color and not for the line, but for the daily label. Okay. And here for the other one as well. And maybe we also add over here a few empty characters like we did before. And for the visionaries, we need it right in front of it. All right, perfect. Now let's play around with it a little bit. Okay, still works, nice. Okay, now the next thing that we could do is we could also make use of symmetry shading. Now let me show you how that works. Now this looks a little bit overwhelming, but if you use it in a very subtle way, for example, if we add white or black, and then maybe add a little bit more transparency. Okay, maybe even more. You see, you can even further divide the scatter plot in different areas. And here we could have a look at the leader section, but some of these leaders are a bit more leading in the operational excellence perspective and others more in the market foresight. So this would then further divide the four different quadrants uh, using that symmetry shape. Now just keep in mind, if you then start playing around with the different cutoff points, it doesn't go through the middle part, right? It just always goes from the bottom left to the top right corner. All right, good. Now I just put it back to five and this is our end result. All right, that's it. We turned our scatter plot into this quadrant chart using the latest Power BI feature around reference lines where we can shade the area that's to the left, right, above or below the reference lines. It's a super useful feature that's not only relevant here for scatter plots, but also for line charts, column charts, where we can use that feature. It's super powerful and worth exploring more. Now, let me know if you already did that in the comment section below to come up with even more ideas that we can explore further. If you like tips and tricks like these ones, then check out these videos over here. If you wanna learn all of my tips and tricks and build Power BI reports together with me, then check out my design transformation program over here. I wanna thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.